If we look at thermometers in the ocean, the first thing we needed to do was protect them with some kind of metal covering. And these are really an early kind of thermometer that were added to what's called a Nansen bottle. And these are reversing thermometers. And again, we're not going to go a lot into the technology of it, but it's a pretty nifty thing as these water samplers are sent down into the water, a weight, this is called a, a weight, is put on the line and it's sent down and it causes the bottles to flip over, which causes also the thermometers to flip over. And when they flip over, it cuts off their supply of mercury. And in doing so, it registers then the temperature at that particular depth when the mercury was cut off. And so in using these kinds of bottles, we can tell what the temperature was very deep in the water column because sometimes it takes an hour or more to pull these bottles back up and pull these thermometers back up when we're talking about lowering them many miles into the ocean depths. So Fritjof Nansen, the Norwegian oceanographer, developed these uh, in the 1800s and they still remain in use today because they're a very useful and simple way of determining the temperature of water at different depths. And here's that Nansen bottle in use. And I have to even admit, I'm so old that I used these bottles when I was an undergraduate in my you know, freshman, sophomore, uh, junior, senior year at the University of Washington. And we still use them today. Again, the bottles attached to a line. The line is then, the bottles then submerge the depth that you prefer. And then you send down this weight, which is called a messenger, which trips the bottle and turns it over, captures water, and takes the temperature measurement. Here's the use of an Anson bottle by the U.S. military. Again, even today, uh, these kinds of bottles are still being used. This is a different kind of um, temperature recording device, and this one actually relies upon a pen, which isn't shown here, that crosses off or actually scribes a piece, a glass plate that's been covered in charcoal. So as this, what looks like a torpedo, descends, a piece of metal will expand or contract, and it's the expansion or contraction of that metal that causes the slide to be scratched, essentially. And then when we pull this whole thing back up, we can read the scratching, and we it, interpret those scratches as changes in temperature. It's kind of a, you know, maybe a Rube Goldberg type of device, but in fact mechanical bathothermographs, which is what this are, allow us to get a continuous temperature record of the water column. And that was really the advance of these particular advices, de devices, because as this thing descends, it's giving us a reading, albeit on a piece of charcoal covered slide, glass, it gives us a reading of temperature all throughout the water column. And that's a big advance. Well, here we finally get into uh, the electronics age a little bit. And here we have what's called an expendable bathythermograph. And this device, which looks a lot like the one that we saw previously, actually doesn't come back. It has a wire that feeds data back up to a simple graph uh, chart, a, a chart recorder and the temperature is then recorded on this chart recorder. This thing is moving, and the signal's coming up, this wire signal's coming up, which moves the pen on the paper, and then the whole bath of thermograph itself just goes down to the bottom of the ocean and the wire breaks. But it gives, again, a continuous record of temperature throughout the water column. Now, of course, the modern sophistication of this is that we finally can record temperatures digitally. Okay, so with these chart paper that you see over my shoulder here, somebody had to actually go back later and, and actually hand pick off the numbers and type them up or graph them up somehow. So it's really laborious, but you do get a lot of data and it does give you a continuous temperature profile throughout the entire water column, whereas the traditional Nansen bottles and reversing thermometers were only giving you temperatures depth by depth, one depth for another, and you wouldn't really know what the temperature was in between. So these kinds of devices were really increasing our spatial resolution of temperature in the ocean. Here's one that can be dropped from an airplane, and these are still used today. 
An airplane flying over can, if there's a particular area they want to know what the temperatures are, perhaps uh, in advance of a hurricane because the intensity of hurricanes relies upon knowledge of ocean temperatures. An airplane can just throw one of these things over the side and it descends down and it deploys a kind of uh, a float that lets the thermistor probe rise back up to the surface and then when it pops up on the surface it sends its data to the hurricane hunter and the hurricane hunter can go back and report its data. So this is kind of a, a modern day sophisticated way of using bathythermographs but really developed in the 40s or 50s still a device that's very useful in oceanography today. Well we introduced previously the CTD uh, in our lecture in chapter 4 when we looked at seafloor features we had a brief introduction to this instrument called the CTD, which stands for conductivity. Remember, that's a, an electronic surrogate for salinity. So conductivity, temperature, and depth. And this CTD instrument truly is the workhorse. It's the, the, the mule, if you want to think about it that way, for oceanographic research. Really, literally, no oceanographer leaves home without a CTD because it provides fundamental information about temperature and salinity properties of the world ocean or wherever you happen to be going. And it, that information is really as vital as knowing whether there's a hill over there or whether there's a group of trees or something over there. It really, again, defines a physical environment for us and so these measurements, even simple as they sound, temperature and salinity, are really important to oceanographers and really important for understanding how the ocean works and understanding where organisms might be found within the ocean. So the CTD, and this should be a picture of one right here. The electronics package are actually down stuffed in beside this ring of bottles, and this ring of bottles is called a rosette. These bottles are in the open position, as you can see, they have a lid on top and you can't see it, but they also, maybe here, you can see they have a lid on the bottom. These lids are tied to lanyards and these lanyards are then tied to this electronic device so that as information comes up from the electronic instruments inside, the actual CTD, all that information travels up the cable to a computer and the scientists stand there and read out what's going on and we can stop this thing and then we can say we want a water sample and you might want to you might want a water sample to measure something interesting biologically you might want a water sample to make sure the conductivity meter is reading what you want it to read you might be looking at biologically important nutrients water samples are valuable for a number of different reasons. There's just a lot of things in the ocean we still can't measure electronically. So having that water sample and being able to take it apart and analyze it in different chemical ways is really important. Scientists are even using water samples to analyze DNA in water. And so this technique of capturing water using a rosette is widespread and widely used and very useful. So each one of these bottles can then be triggered by the scientist and these bottles will close. Here you see this is a, a CTD being used probably in the Arctic though, it could be the Antarctic. How can you tell? It's just cold. And here we are with the CTD back up on deck and here these scientists are using the stopcocks to fill their bottles. They just open these up and it lets water come in and you can see somebody here labeling the bottles and these people are wearing gloves so the water doesn't get contaminated and this guy looks like Santa Claus but he's really not. He's a really famous and really cool oceanographer, Lou Cottesbody, um, and he let his picture be taken. Here you can see the electronics packages and there's more than just conductivity, temperature, and depth on here. There's probably some optical instruments and other things as well but I think you get the idea that through electronic instruments and using electronic triggers we can get a very good picture of the ocean where we lower these instruments, the CTDs. And as I said before, the CTD is the workhorse of oceanography.